The Honorable Allison Love will give the Invocation Pledge of Allegiance. If you will please join me in a moment of silence for those people who are weathering the effects of Hurricane Michael. May they weather this um, test of endurance and faith. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's see here. Um, Michael, so we don't have anybody to swear in. No. And nobody signed up for appearances, it looks like. Um, and nobody signed up for the public forum. It's going to be a quick meeting tonight, right people. Uh, I do want to, before we get started on the motions, I do want to point out one thing about uh, fire department in my district. Uh, uh, a point was made that uh, the tax board of the Newport Fire Department was made up of all firemen, and that was incorrect. I got a phone call from the chief in my district and he pointed out that was incorrect and it's always been just two people out of the five and I think Miss uh, Cox had pointed out that's a proper ratio because that's kind of the financial accountability arm of the fire district so I appreciate Chief Love, I mean Chief Love, uh, Chief <laughs> Falk oh. yeah, uh, calling me and pointing that out and I just wanted to make sure we set the record straight so there would be no mis misinformation for the fire district. And that was my fault, so I apologize for that, Chief Falk. Uh, so do we have a motion on consent agenda? Move to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, next item, public hearing. Council hold public hearing and consider second reading of an ordinance to amend the code of the County of York, South Carolina, Chapter 155. Sections 155.009 and 155.428C in order to amend the definition of major roads to comply with SCDOT standards, to increase the minimum lot width standards for new residential development on major roads from 100 feet to 350 feet, to invoke the pending ordinance doctrine, to provide for a public hearing, and to provide for other matters related thereto. Anybody want to speak against this? Yes, sir. And when you come forward, if you give your name and address to our clerk to council. Name's Tony Smith. Address is 4249 Sher Road in Sharon. Um, didn't have much time to prepare for this, but just kind of looking over some of these roads that they're calling major roads, that would be like Cameron Road, Carson Road, Sandford Road. I mean, just a, a lot of small roads on the western. I, I see there's a lot in the western side of the county. Um, I fall under Mr. Winkler's district, so I was mainly looking around home. But uh, this is going to affect a lot of people. And I feel like that this hadn't been publicized enough where people can make a decision, you know, to voice their opinions. Um, I mean, this is taking... You take Cameron Road, for example, um, you know, that's a lot of farmland out there. You got a 15-acre a tract zoned agriculture. Okay, well, if the, the, the farmer's getting old, he wants to cut two tracts off of and give to his kids. Well, I mean, if he doesn't have, what's it, 1,100 foot of road front, he can't cut two tracts off to give to his kids. I mean, this is going to affect a lot of families and, and their property values. Um, but I just think that... that this needs to be delayed until it can be, you know, publicized what it is and how it's going to affect people. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else opposed? Yes, ma'am. My name is Cheryl Boyd. I live at 2454 McGill Road in Smyrna. I'm also a real estate, a local real estate agent here, and I myself did not have enough time to 
uh, prepare for tonight. But I would like to say I also have looked at the maps and all the roads. There are more roads, in my opinion, that are considered major roads than minor roads based on that map. The road I live on is uh, the nickname for it is Snake Road because it's so curvy. I don't know how that could be considered a major collector road as well. I know folks now who have one particular family who's inherited 125 acre track of land here recently. It's going through probate right now. With this 350 foot road requirement, feet of road requirement, it's going to affect what the family can sell that property for and uh, affect their inheritance. I think there should be a little bit more thought and input put into this before it's passed. And I think that uh, a lot of folks and don't realize what's going on with the county because they're not in the pulse of it. And I think they don't realize what's happening to their property until they get ready to do something with it. I know that firsthand from selling real estate. And I think a little bit more, I'm opposed to it, I think because I think there should be more thought put into what roads. There's so much changing going on down at the county and I could probably keep you here all night with some issues, but I'm not gonna do that. But I would like for you to, uh, I don't think it should be passed and I think it should have uh, some further input from more members, more um, people that live in the county. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else want to speak against? Anybody want to speak in favor? Do we have a discussion? All those favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Do we have a new motion? I'll motion to, I don't know if this is, can be done, but I would like to motion to defer it and remove the pending ordinance doctrine until we get time to get more input on some of these roads because I do believe there are a lot of roads in not just my district but in Allison's district and Christie's district that are listed as major roads that if you go ride those roads and look they're not major thoroughfares in my opinion um, and we have stopped that without that extra input on that and so I would I'll make the motion to defer and remove pending ordinance doctrine if that's possible can I have a second for a discussion I don't hear a second. So do we have a new motion? I don't think that I have an issue with deferral. Um, I, I don't think we need to lift pending ordinance because the reason why this was brought up was to address some major concerns that are happening um, in an area where um, basically developers are getting around what the intent of the existing ordinances are and it's resulting in a major road problem um, that will prevent the county from being able to grow healthy in the future. And I'll just say that one of these roads that's on this list is, is a road I live on and I do share some you know, concerns about that. Um, but I do think moving forward with second reading would probably move this faster along. Either there will be a, a, some review by staff after that um, to come back and address the concerns that were brought by the two constituents that showed up. But I don't think anyone on this council is interested in, in trying to ramrod something. We're trying to address a significant problem. This was something that was brought to us by staff as a good way to, re to react to it. So I don't know if I'd like, I'll just state my position. So. I'd like to make a motion then. I'd like to motion, make a motion to approve second reading and defer third reading no sooner than November 19th gives you that time to work out all the differences of this. So do we have a second on that? I'll second that, but I wanted to say something else. Oh, Miss Love, discussion. So um, I think that one thing that might be a good idea, David, is this the list of all the roads that it would affect? It's not an all-inclusive list. We've tried to put everything in there that we did come so, up So I think what's important is for people to realize, you know, when we talk about Snake Road, um, one thing, the, the worst thing that you can put on a road that's like, that's like that is um, curb, curb cut. So um, I think that maybe if we could get somehow get this list out and this map, because this is, this is kind of, I mean, I think some people might be concerned about roads that aren't even affected by this, um, and that would alleviate some of the concerns. Um, because I'm looking at this list, that road's not on here, but um, it, it, doesn't sound like a, it doesn't sound like a road that, that would be on the list. So. Um, Anybody? 
Snake Road. That's Snake Road right there. It's McGill Road. M C G I L. Anybody else? Hey, Mr. Williams. Hey, I know, I know that this was the first attempt to address serial lot splits, which which we need to. I think. But one thing that that the first gentleman uh, uh, brought up that I hadn't thought about was that, you know if because uh, there's family exemptions of, of, involved in serial lot splits and that kind of thing. Uh, but what Mr. Smith pointed out that. Um, if you don't have enough road frontage, then that limits how you can give it to, you, to your children. I don't know if that can be addressed in the family in the family exemption too, or if this is going to do that. So that's a, while we're looking at things, um, I guess add that to look at. Could it, uh, following up on what you're talking about, uh, Chad? Um, could you not do a common drive? Isn't that within the point of this was to do away with the multiple driveways we're seeing, and you could just do a single common drive that split out? Am I wrong when I say that, David, or is that would that be allowed or just an administrative nightmare? That's yeah, well, I get that part. Yeah. Well, we do encourage uh, shared driveways now. I think there's some problems with that, and then on a long stretch, it still leads to multiple driveways. So I don't think. I mean, that may help, but I don't think that's the solution. So I think uh, we are, but we are looking at some other uh, a second phase of this that addresses lot splits and the family exemptions and things like that. So I think if you defer for at least one meeting, that gives us an opportunity to, to develop the second piece of this that you might be able to uh, you know, view in its entirety and it may answer some more questions. But this was something that we could do to address the immediate issue. And I think we've done that with the pending ordinance. So if you wanna allow that to stay and, and postpone at least one meeting, we may be able to catch up the other ordinance with this one. All right. Thank you. Well, I think that's what my motion did. So. Yep, yep. That's what your motion did. Anybody else? Ms. I would Cox? just like to say thank you to David for proposing a solution. <clears throat> I mean, we have a problem, and it's going to be hard to figure it out, but I would, I would suggest that you folks um, connect with David and, and share with him your specific concerns so that we um, can talk about specifics. A lot of times folks will call a council member independently and say, hey, I've got, a, I've got a concern about it, but they don't show up and we don't get to hear the specifics. I appreciate you coming out so that we can make sure that to, to look at that and to address it. The intent of this was, again, there are situations that are happening on major collector roads that um, you have an eight acre parcel that's, supposed to, that's zoned RUD. It's only supposed to have four homes on it. And what's happening is they're getting around it by doing eight at the end of the day, four one year and four the next year, which is causing problems for traffic to be able to travel safely and it it impacts the safety of, of folks that are driving down that road but mr winkler um you know i, I understand the intent and, and the reason i have an issue with it is I, I met with a constituent today who has a corner lot um he's got about 670 feet on rama church road which is a major road according to this which in my opinion is not a major road but um and he is wanting to, to subdivide he, he's it's zoned for one acre lots there um, and so it's on the corner of, um, hang on a minute, uh, Rama and um, uh, the other road is a, a dirt road and I'm trying to remember the name of it on Allwood Road. Um, and so he's gonna divide one acre lots along Allwood Road, which is a minimum of 100 foot of frontage, but he can't do that. He's being told he's because of where it's at in the proximity, he's gonna have to do shared driveways on that side for, and he's doing, he's got over um, over 150 feet on most of those lots. But then on the, the Rama Church side, he's got 670 feet. So he can't do two drives on that side. He can't split. And it's a little confusing for some of this stuff because to me, it like in this example is one I've met with, he could do one drive off that side, the major road side, but his there's a home there now and it comes off the dirt road but he's being told he can't subdivide the backside to do one road off of that because there's not enough frontage on that side. So there, there's a lot of other implications on this that, that we may not always think about. You know, we've got something that's zoned one acre minimum, but he can't do one acre minimum lots in it um, because of this now. So, um, you know, I, I just have a lot of questions and concerns still on this, and that's why I will not be supporting if we can't take the pending ordinance off, doctrine off, I'm not supporting it at all. So. Anybody else? Um, I've been, a, 
I hate pending ordinance. I think it's not transparent to the public. I think it's unfair to ramrod a ordinance down your throat without having it fully vetted. That's what a pending ordinance does. Uh, but this need was there because there is an issue with curb cuts and problems with traffic. Um, but, and I'd even mentioned per Mr. Johnson pointing out maybe uh, common driveways, and I mentioned 200 feet and paired the driveways, and that would cut down curb cuts 67 percent, but I didn't get any enthusiasm from staff. So um, I just kind of had my thoughts, and until these citizens came forward and talked tonight, and then Robert pointed out a constituents issue, it pointed out that my fears are coming true. Uh, sometimes government gets on steroids and to fix a problem it kind of just steamrolls over everybody else. So uh, with us not deferring this and eliminating the pending ordinance per Mr. Or Winkler's proposal I, and hearing uh, the public speak up on this short notice and already had two or three people speaking up about it, I, like I said, I feel my fears are warranted so I'm not going to support the motion. Question on the motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 Next item. Council to consider second reading of an ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled to establish operating and capital budgets for the operation of the county government of York County for the fiscal year commencing July 1st to provide for the levy of taxes for York County for the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2018 to provide for the expenditure of tax revenues and other county funds to provide for other fiscal matters related to the county government. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item, council second reading of an ordinance to provide for the issuance and sale of not exceeding $10 million general, $10 million general obligation bonds of York County, South Carolina, Blake Wiley Parks and Recreation District to prescribe the per the purposes for which the pro proceeds shall be expended to provide for the levy and collection of ad valorem taxes for the repayment of said bonds and other matters related thereto. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item. Consider se second reading case number 1813. Resolved from RUD to RUD 1, 1712 Gardendale Road in the Fort Mill community. Move to defer till the November 5 meeting. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item. Council discussion regarding solar farms. Mr. Winkler wanted this on the agenda. Um, it has come to my attention as chair of Economic Development Committee that there are some businesses starting to look at York County for potential solar farms. And, um, you know, as alternative energy grows more and more, it's something that's popping up more and more in, in South Carolina and North Carolina, all over the Carolinas and the country. But as we figured out with a few other things over the last few years, we don't have a zoning ordinance that allows a solar farm. Um, so it's something that um, I wanted us to discuss because uh, there, there is one in particular that I know of. It, there's no, no negotiation started as far as with economic development or anything yet, but they've reached out and they are working with a potential land seller to buy uh, about 270 acres um, and do a $35 million solar farm investment in the county, um, which would be you know, quite a bit of property tax. Um, but we're telling them they can't do it because we don't have zoning that allows a solar farm. Um, again, our zoning is the type that, um, and I know no one here put that zoning in, but basically if it's not specifically listed in our zoning, it's not legal to do it. Um, and in 1980, whatever, when the zoning was put in, nobody thought about solar farms and stuff, so it's not something that they can be done. Um, I know we, we're working on that, and Mr. Hudspeth has got his hands full of stuff, but um, you know, hopefully, eventually we'll figure out a better way to do zoning because who knows 20 years from now when none of us may be up here or some of I don't know. I, I won't be in 20 years, but um, you know, what else is going to come up that somebody's going to, a business that we've never even thought of, and we're going to be telling them, no, you can't do it because our zoning doesn't allow it. So. 
Um, I just wanted this put on for discussion because I would like to see us, um, you know, if we got somebody wanting to invest 30 or 40 million dollars in the county, um, <coughs> I don't like telling them no. So. so for my clarification, planning department told him or you that since there's, it's not spelled out solar farm in the zoning ordinance on any section, there's no way they can accommodate it unless we change the ordinance? That's my understanding. I think Mr. Williams may know. Yeah, like uh, Mr. Williams. Williams. Yeah, that's the way, my understanding, that's kind of the way our zoning code works, which is it's a whole lot easier to, to defend and manage. Um, if, if, if it's not specifically, I mean, if it's, I guess the flip side is, is if it's not in there, then it's, if it's not specifically restricted, then it's allowed. You can, you can have just as many problems with that approach as you can with this, as we've seen some of that as we've gone. So I don't think that it's a bad policy. I, mean, I don't know how much we need to address that, but this is what typically happens when you say, well, now here's a need. We need to look at this. Is there anything else we need to look at? Then it gets down to the point. We've given the staff and the planning department all this list of things to do. Are we going to reprioritize it? Do they think it, uh, it, it merits? Or how close are they to? I mean, we had a zoning code rewrite going on. I don't know where we are with that. Um, but I, I would be careful before we change the policy because it sounds, because we'll be, you know, six months from now we could be saying something yeah. just as with an example saying how in the world could this be approved, you know, how because it's not specifically allowed. So and, I'd just be careful. And that was just kind of a side comment, right. I understand it. But, but the big thing was to get the discussion, does council, since we said planning has to have direction from us if this rises to the point of them adding it to their to-do list and knocking something else off, I wanted council to, to make that discussion and that decision. And per perhaps, you, Mr. Chairman, just perhaps I'm yeah. naive on this. It seemed to me that when you look at most of these zoning ordinances, they have they list out hundred things you can do in them. It seemed like you just add number one oh one solar farm. Yeah. And that and, and literally this is not a rewriting yeah. of an entire ordinance. This is a slip in one word and the ordinance now fits it and maybe right. what which which zoning classification is best for it um it seems to me they're going to be out in the agricultural area so maybe you just add it on to one of those um i, I don't I, i'll leave it up to staff but it would seem to me this isn't a major undertaking like rewriting the entire planning code or creating the ordinance we just talked about a few minutes ago and passed our second reading on this is just a slip in a <coughs> slip in solar, solar panel farm, farm and, and rolling on our merry way. So I, I fully support doing that and getting it done, if, if needed, getting it done quickly. Yeah, David, can you just find the appropriate, you, you want to say something? Yes. I was just going to say, I'm can you find the appropriate. That, that easily yeah. Yeah. That's the, I, I definitely <laughs> wanted that. I don't think it's a extremely labor intensive kind of ordinance to write. I think it's more than just adding one line in there. There's, right. uh, you have to craft the definition. You'd have to um, determine which district it goes in and what type of uh, restrictions you might want to put on it. But that's something we can run concurrent with what other things we're doing. So I don't think right. it's going to well, take I, I, a like Mr. Johnson said it's kind of just finding the appropriate one that you can slide right. it in. So, I mean, I think we can run that with everything else we're doing without. You don't them. think it'll kick anything down? I don't think so. Yeah. Is, so is this? I've never is, tried to think, regulate a solar farm before, so I don't really know for sure. But, uh, yeah, does this require Michael of uh, three readings to do this? Yes, it does. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And there's there's several ordinances out by cities and local governments within the state of South Carolina that have already implemented it. Mm -hmm. So things that are being approved are already in existence. And yeah, I think we last could use year, that year to guide. They did some economic incentive stuff in the state. I'm not always a big fan of doing what other counties do, but in this case, I think this is the perfect example when you no 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 reason for some the right time That's guidance. Right. Exactly. Given given some, I think clearly we need to have the flexibility to be able to do it. Given some recent issues and not so recent issues that have happened in my district, I think putting it as by right probably isn't the way to go. I think probably using a special exception yeah, for a say. mega farm, you don't know. I mean, if if it applies in a district by right, it can it can be a very Thing. That would be my only suggestion is that we that staff consider that and, and make sure that we're not locking people in and putting things in crazy places by right. Everybody, Ms. Barani, everybody uh, good? I, I agree with um, Councilmember Cox. Um, if you just stick it in AGC, then it could pop up anywhere in AGC. Mm -hmm. But if you said it was a 
is maybe allowed, but a special exception, then it's more of a case by case because once someone puts one in, some some brainchild in, in the garage may say, well, I'll just start one up right here between these two houses and, and try to give it a go and start one from the ground up, but we wouldn't want that to happen. But So keep right. in mind the special exception part probably is a little more solid way to kind of back this up. And, no, and I'm sorry. Ms. Lyle. <clears throat> and the question is, is it AGC or is it is it commercial? I mean, is it a bit, I, don't, I just don't know enough about solar farms, but if, if whether or not it's AGC would be a question that I would have. Yeah, I think David and them just need yeah. to work it out the best category and then we can take it from there. The, I guess yes, sir, Mr. Williams. The, is the, if somebody uh, wants to put solar panels on their house, do we have a mechanism to do that now or is that specifically prohibited too? I mean, that, that I think while we're looking at it. Uh, uh, right, exactly. So, it, but I, did somebody just put them up, or, <laughs> or, or, uh, or are they allowed? Because they, they, they should should be allowed, and they probably are. But uh, they're integrated into the house. Okay. Uh, okay. So, next item: council <coughs> discussion regarding Church Road campsite development. I would ask. We've just gotten a bunch of information just now, so I'd ask that we defer that to the next council meeting. Okay. Everybody good with that? Okay, next item. Council to approve the creation of new positions in IT, GIS at no additional increase to the current budget. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item. Council to approve additional electronic storage needed for Isalon storage and data domain to Round Tower in the amount of $252,212.15. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. I uh, Johnson. Point out that if you read, if you read the packet, and I'm sure everybody did, the reason we're doing this is because we need high definition storage for the body cameras that our right. sheriff's deputies are now wearing. Um, I think it's a great idea that our deputies are wearing body cameras. Um, that was required by the legislature. But what the legislature failed to do was actually put any money toward what it's going to cost to store all of this data. And this data, if you think about it, if you arrested someone today and they were convicted and then they went up through the appeals to the Supreme Court and then when they were done with all that, they began all of their post-conviction relief appeals. You could end up sitting on this data for 10, 15 years. This is a ton of data and this cost is just beginning. Um, and, I, and I just want to point out that this is just, to me, another un unfunded mandate from the state. Well, and, and I guess another, another difference, not like we got surprised by this. The, one of the biggest surprises was that we thought that uh, it, you wouldn't have to have it in ultra high definition, but we found out that you do have to have to store it in the highest definition possible, which is quadruple the space requirements. Everybody good? Kevin, you got any comment? Question on the motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item, council to approve first reading of an ordinance to amend the code of the county of York, South Carolina, to dissolve the York County Board of Rural Fire Control to transfer the rights and responsibility for administering the York County Rural Fire District to York County Council, to establish the Fire Advisory Committee to otherwise provide for the provision of fire protection services in York County and to provide for other matters related thereto. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item, committee reports. The Honorable Finance and Operations Committee Chairman, Mr. Michael Johnson. The Finance Committee met today at 530. We considered applications and service for the Veterans Memorial Park Advisory Committee. We chose Ronnie Taylor for the 2022 expiration, John Mattingly for the 2019 expiration, Michael Fuser for the 2020 expiration, Robert Sweet for the 2021 expiration, and then we deferred one open seat for 2019. Which committee was that? That is the Veterans Memorial Park Advisory Committee, that's a brand that's new that's committee that's filling that's literally every spot. We also considered York County forever. We approved Johnny Walker for District 5 and, Lind and reappointment of Lindsey Walker for District 6. For the York County Library, we appointed Glenda Jones for District 3. For the Newport Fire Tax Board, Dean Holler and for a first term and John Adams for a second term. We did annual reviews on Dwight Wood and William Mitchell. For the Employee Grievance Committee, 
We approved Bryant Cook for the purchasing district and Sabrina Moore for the prison district. And the planning commission, we reviewed all planning commission members, found one potential issue and have advised the, uh, the treasurer to um, look into that. Thank you, sir. Uh, any new non-agenda comments from council members? Mr. Williams. I just got one uh, for the second time in 10 years. I uh, scheduled to be out of town during a council meeting, so the, the uh, second week in November, uh, y'all can do it without me. If you need me, we can conference, conference in. The first time, y'all were able to, uh, to do it without me. I, th I have confidence and faith that you can, but if not, um, Move it, or, or, or I'll be watching you this time because I can live stream it this time. Last time we didn't have live streaming available. This time I'll be watching, and if you, I'll text you. If I can. You can live stream from the beach. They you can live stream from anywhere. <laughs> I can only assume it will just be quieter on this end. Of the might meeting. be. You might be able to hear. You said this. You said meeting. the second meeting in November. Second meeting in November. Okay. Yeah, they they meet before Thanksgiving, hence the. Gotcha. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Roddy. Well, I will miss the next meeting. The first meeting in November is my anniversary. So we celebrate the anniversary next month, and I would like to ask the chairman, can I sit in Chad's seat on the second meeting? Since <laughs> if you so want to, that <laughs> suits me fine. <laughs> and congratulations on the anniversary. Thank you. Don't Mr. Man. Roddy, we would welcome you to this side of the table. <laughs> I know. What's wrong with me? Yeah, I, I do shower before these meetings. I'm <laughs> Anybody else? There being none, do we have a uh, nobody from Citizens Concern signed up? To, so do we have a motion for executive session? I'm going to make a motion to go into executive, executive session for pro proposed contractual matter for Project Destiny. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Be back in five minutes. There's no action item, so if there's no further discussion, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. We're adjourned.